one of my tasks was to explain to my colleagues, to my students, to my PhD students, the early career researchers, what does it mean to do a Vygotsky and experiment? when we are collecting data, when we are making data analysis. The problem was that in his book, volume four, History of Development of Higher Mental Functions, I think it's chapter two, the method. Well, Vygotsky gives only general characteristics of this method without explaining how it might look in a, in a field work, how it might look in a concrete song. Uh, and my task was to make a convertation of this general approach into the very practical principles which might help my colleagues to organize the experiment, uh, to experiment according to the requirements of the general gen uh, the, uh, experimental genetic method, to apply the method into the concrete, concrete research, concrete project. And I don't want, want to tell you the story how I did it, uh, because I, I, I had to collect all the places from all the writings of Vygotsky when he explains a little bit more details, less details about his experimental settings in formation of concepts, mm. memory, uh, attention. <laughs> so, and then I have developed that, that this list of five principles. What I'm trying to do is uh, uh, these principles I have developed for the to support uh, early career researchers and PhD students to create mm. their experimental design for our PhD studies to be done according to Vygotsky's theoretical framework plus Vygotsky's experimental genetic methods. Not only uh -huh. for my students, I created it for these principles for for everybody who seriously wants to apply cultural historical theory as a background, as, as a framework for the, for the yes. exper experimental study. Because the problem is that there is a lot of uh, <clears throat> publica publications about uh, making a research with children using cultural historical as a framework, but the experiment itself is not done according to Vygotsky's requirements, mm -hmm. which does not correspond with the principle of because he says that if you use theory as a framework you have to use the method this method not any other methods and uh, just to support people who really want to apply cultural historical theory seriously and deeply i have developed these principles uh, what's uh, the difference between this way of experimentation comparing to traditional existing uh, ways of experimentation in cultural psychology or in uh, experimental psychology. Mm. What's, what are the specific features of this uh, general method which Vygotsky himself called in Russian experimental-genetický method which is in English experimental genetic method. That's the title uh, of this method, the name of the method given by Vygotsky himself. But of course, here, genetical doesn't mean genetics. Right. It means it means genesis, 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 development. First of all. It, every principle in this list is related to the subject matter of the theory and the subject matter of the theory is the process is the process of development of higher psychological functions so these are principles of experimental study of the process of development of higher psychological functions experimental study of the process so we do not have objects under study we do not have mm. uh, uh, well uh, functions under study we do have processes under study we have to design experimental settings in such a way that it will generate the process of development it will put the child in the situation where the child will 
be able to develop. As Vygotsky says, we have to create artificial laboratory conditions which generate the development. Development happens in front of our eyes, <laughs> or before our eyes. And our task is just to, to, to analyze, to, to collect the data and then to analyze the most important steps of this process. This differentiates uh, Vygotsky's method from traditional methods, which are mostly focused on how different children are using their higher psychological functions, which are already developed how they are using fruits of development. Because he says, before studying fruits, we have to understand the whole process which leads the bud through the flower to the fruit. So, that's different. So, and these principles are the principles of experimental study of the process of development of higher psychological functions, which is the same as the process of cultural development of the child. principle says that uh, uh, the most useful way of studying the process of development is to identify the functions which are uh, in the beginning of the developmental cycle because some functions are already de developed we are working with children in different at different ages Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in, 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 pre in, in primary school, children have already developed some psychological functions. For example, they, their will is quite okay, developed. They, they can control themselves, they can, they can discipline themselves. Mm -hmm. So their memory is quite well developed already. So, but uh, their thinking might be not, especially mm -hmm. abstract thinking or theoretical thinking or conceptual thinking. They're, they're full of everyday concepts, but as for scientific concepts, probably not. Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, it, <clears throat> it makes it very useful for us just to, if, if my interest is to study the certain higher psychological functions, I better try to find children at the age where, where the functions are at the beginning. So my task is to, to find the buds of development. <laughs> Because if at the end I want to get fruits, if at the end I want to create an experimental conditions to support these buds to become the fruits as a result of my experimental study, I have to find the buds first. If there are no buds yet, I cannot, or I can create absolutely ideal conditions, but nothing happens. Mm. If there are fruits already, <laughs> so I don't need to create any conditions. So that's why I have to find the the, the participants, the participants, uh, where at the age where their some psychological functions are in the yeah, embryonic state, they are ready to go. And one of the things which might help me is Vygotsky's book, The Problem of Age. The problem in, in the book, the problem of age, Vygotsky gives the periodization, periodization of child development according to psychological ages, mm. and he highlights which functions is the, are the most developed at every age. Unfortunately, only only three or four chapters of the book are translated into English in one of the volumes. I think it's volume five. So, and me and my colleague, oh, my colleague David Kellogg. Kellogg and myself, we are now preparing that translation, English translation of the whole book. But the point is that at every stage, at every age, there are, in the child, there are functions which are already developed, fruits, and at the same time, there are functions which are in the buds. It's not like in a tree, first buds, then all are flowers, all are fruits. The child is much more complex. As a child, as a tree, there are some fruits and the buds and the flowers at the same time. <laughs> So, mm. so that's why the, the uh, but the question is where are the buds? And, and, and the answer is the buds are not within the child. Buds are not in the child. Buds exist in a form of social interaction. 
because of the general genetic law, which says that every function appears twice. First, it appears uh, on social, in social plan, right, of the stage, in a form of inter interactions, uh, and then it appears within the child as interpsychological category. So, and uh, and if if my research question is to study the origins of these particular functions, I have to look at the child and fi and find the buds of development of these particular functions in child's everyday interactions or putting child into specially created laboratory conditions to create these conditions which generate the changes of the buds into the into the fruits. At the same time, in our consciousness, there are functions which are fruits. They've they already developed. They finished their cycle of development. At the same time, there are other functions which are on the stage of the flowers. At the same time, there are some functions which are at the stage of the buds. And they all coexist. And they all interact. At the same time, on the same wave, you can see <laughs> the, <laughs> the fruits, the flowers and the, and, the, and the buds. So this is the situation. And uh, if you speak about the fruits of development, I can ask you a question. Anthony, where are the fruits of development? And Anthony, you will ask me, hey, Nikolai, fruits are already developed, individualized, internalized, high psychological functions. Fruits are there in, within the mind. And this will be absolutely correct answer. Yes, fruits are, for example, uh, my logical memory, it's a fruit. I can use my logical memory just without saying a word, just memorizing something by using this kind of memory. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are parts of my mind. But when I ask you, where are the buds of development? <laughs> it might be an interesting question. Do you have any idea where are the buds of development? Of high psychological functions, where they are, where can I find the buds? The gardener can find the buds of the tree. So there are the buds. As a psychologist, I have to find where are the buds because if I want the buds to be to be a fruits, I have to I have to find where where they are. Huh? As a researcher, as an experimental researcher doing my experiment, I have to identify where are the buds. What is your answer, Anthony? My answer, and I think I'm citing you, is is uh, they're not in social relations, but they uh, are uh -huh, social relations. Uh -huh. Yes, they are. Uh, but not, but not, but not just any old social relations. No, yeah, the, the bud, yeah, the yeah, the, the bud, yes, the buds are the dramatic collusion type. Uh, yeah, of relations. And Sometimes when we have a task which we need to, to solve, but we understand that we cannot solve the task, what, what do we feel? Frustration, struggle. Yes. Uh, motivation. Motivation. Yeah. Sometimes frustration, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uncertainty. So all these characteristics are characteristics of drama. It's a dramatic collision. It's a collision, it's a kind of contradiction with the task which I need and I'm highly motivated to solve the task. On the other hand, I understand my limits. I cannot, I cannot solve the task alone. So, pe and people begin to f feel intellectually, intellectually, uh, in, how to say, intellectually stressed or distressed. So these are all characteristics of drama, dramatic. By drama, I mean the collision, the, the contradiction between the things I should do and my inability to do this. So this is what category means. It might be it might be intellectual, it might be social, it might be emotional. So and this is associated with the feeling of uh, uh, what we call Pirjivanie. Pirjivanie is a complex 
is a, it's not only emotional, Perijavani mm -hmm. includes elements of thinking, volition, imagination, uh, creativity, everything. Because every drama is associated with the Perijavani, but it's another story, but I'm collecting that. So, no, that's, but that's, and, a story, that's a story I'm interested in. Could you continue a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, and uh, maybe, maybe later, but, okay. but, but why, why drama is important? Drama is important because because uh, of uh, of development and development is social cultural process. Every higher psychological function first appears in a form of social relation, as Vygotsky says, in a form of drama collision, and only being overcome it becomes the individual uh, higher psychological function. And why it should be a collision? Why it should be a drama? The answer is very easy. The, yeah, the answer is very easy. Because dialectically, contradiction is a moving force for development. There is no development without contradiction. Contradiction is a moving force for development. Moving force means what? Moving force uh, is the engine, engine of development, contradiction, according to Hegel. So development, so development is overcoming the contradiction, but it's it's very general philosophical principle. But but, so this is this is potentially the difference between learning and development. Yes, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. My level so, of learning. So are you, so are you yeah. suggesting learning without learning without drama of some sort is yeah. not, is not developmental? Yeah, but there are different types of dramas. There might be dramas yeah. that that I, I cannot solve the task and then I. I just give up. Or my dear drama, I cannot solve the task, I need the help. And then together with others, I will find a way to, to solve the problem. And then I will be able to solve the problem in the future on my own. So there are different types of drama. But the point is that it should be a drama. If there is no drama, there is no potential for development. That's the point. That's why Vygotsky says a category twice, category and category. And then he, he highlights it. It's, it's, it's a small drama between people. The idea is that it should be a drama which generates generates development, not just drama, not just a collision, mm. but the collision which generates the developmental process. It should okay. be devel developmentally potential uh, drama. You give them the tasks they cannot solve, but you give can give them the task in a form of the dramatic collision that that that. If we cannot, if we are not solving, if if this, the problem is not solved, we cannot go further. Drama is very important because dynamics of personality is drama. It should be a small drama between people. And Vygotsky even said that we should create psychology not in terms of processes but in terms of drama, <laughs> with the concepts of drama. That was his dream, because the drama is the most important in our lives. You overcome dramas, I become dramas, and who we are now, much more dependent on that, how we lived through those dramatic events in our lives. We didn't give up, we overcome the drama, dramas of our life, but that drama is still in our history. And the way we look on the world now, it very much depends on the dramas of our life we overcome. The principle of drama, the principle of collision, is so important because it gives me, a researcher, the opportunity to identify the basic contradiction which generates this developmental process, which I try to <clears throat> I try to organize in my life. Without initial contradictions, there will be no further development. That's why this principle is so important for me as a researcher because uh, it uh, I follow I follow the dialectical idea of the contradiction as a moving force of development. I have to create this engine. I have to create this moving force in my in my lab laboratory, uh, which will generate this small micro developmental process. Because uh, doing this. I'm, I, I, I'm identifying the 
the most important characteristic of development, which is contradiction. So, so not just any social interaction will do. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Only social interactions which have it, which uh, exist in the form of the of the category, which means in the form of a contradiction, in the form of collision, in the form of dramatic events. Collision, collision between uh, between uh, between between a person and a work of art. Collision between yeah. a person and another person. Person collision between a person and, and some moral dilemma. Yes, yes, Famous, yes, 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 okay. yes, yes, yes. So and uh, because it helps me, it helps me to find the starting point. Because development starts from the collision, from resolving this. So as an experimenter, uh, I am now able to identify or especially create the starting point. Okay. And uh, by the way, the, the buds are there, but we will come to this later. So, and uh, for Vygotsky, that was very important because if you look at his uh, article called Concrete Human Psychology, in that article, he says clearly that in our experiment, we have to restore the whole process of development. We have to unfold the whole process of development to its initial, to its initial form, which means small drama between two people. So, it's not Nikolai, it's what Vygotsky says. If we are able to identify the most important dramatical collisions in the process of development, then we will have a better understanding of what development is. You see? He, he says this in History of Development of Higher Psychological Function. Then he repeats this in an article called Concrete Human Psychology. Then he repeats this in Thinking and Speech. Then he repeats this in Lectures on Pedology. You see, he, he is coming to this point all the time. All the time. Drama, dramatic characteristics, uh, contradictions, so, 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 so. That's why. Uh, for me, as an experimenter, it's so important to uh, to apply the principle of uh, category of a collision or contradiction, or whatever. But on, of course, if my research question is about that, if my research question is not about that, I don't need this principle. I want to command the word drama. Because for American uh, and, and, and British tradition, drama is something which is, has a negative connotation, it's like dramatic. People trying to escape dramas from their lives, they say that uh, drama is something bad. But uh, let's look at this philosophically. From the dialectical point of view, drama is an important component of our life. And from dramatic events, our development generates because drama is a contradiction. And dialectically, contradiction is a source of development. There is no contradiction, there is no development. Development is the resolution of the contradictions. We resolve the contradictions, and as a result, we, have, we are dealing with the new ones. So, so the principle of drama is that, uh, it, why it's a principle? Because it helps me, a re researcher, when I have a collection of observations about the child, Let's imagine I have uh, 24 or 35 hours of, of video observations of the child in the everyday settings, being be to home settings or school settings or every, uh, 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 daycare center settings. What, I, what can I do with these 35 or 50 hours of video? Impossible to analyze every moment. So we sit together with my student, and we look at this video and we try to find the moments, the moments when the child experiencing the small dramas, small dramatic situations. For example, when there is time to go to bed, but the child doesn't want to go to bed, wants to stay playing, and mom says, go, 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 the child says, no, no, no. So this is a dramatic, this is a small, very small drama. Uh, for us, it's a maybe nothing, but for child, it's a real drama. So, or they are playing together, they're playing together and then they, they're deciding who takes the role 
of the wolf, who takes the role of that, and they are debating about it, who is the first, who is the second. All these interesting, small, dramatic events are, for us are most important pieces of data to analyze because we can see how the child tries to resolve the dramatic events, what are new tools he is using, or what tools he already or she already has uh, to resolve the problem. What suggests, okay, you want to, to play this, I want to play, okay, let's make it in order. I play first, you then, say, okay, good. So you see these moments are, are important. Or we can specially create the dramatic moments in a special conditions in the psychological laboratory. For example, we play together with the children and in their role, they have to solve the, the certain task. It might be a dramatic event associated with this task. Like we have to risk, risk the Captain Hook, but there are the pirates, we have to hide. <laughs> so being involved in these dramatic moments, uh, it gives me a lot of information about the, 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 the process of development because in these moments, the, I can see the process of development just in front of my eyes, how the child overcomes. If, if my task as a researcher to, to is my, if my research question is to, to study what kind of cultural tools the child is using to overcome the dramas on what are the dramas the child experiences as the source, as the inter, interpsychological. So in my data, I especially take these moments, which gives me information to answer my research question if my research question is related to the origins of high psychological functions. I know that origins are in dramatical moments. And therefore, to answer the question, I find the dramatical moments in my 24 or 58 hours of observation. I take them for, deep, for deeper analysis mm. in order to find the answer to my research question about the sources of development of high psychological functions as an interpsychological uh, level. So that's again, the principle of organization of experiment and principle of data collection and the principle of data analysis. So it's, it's all coherent. You see the coherence from theoretical framework, laws of development, concepts and the method and the data collection and data analysis. Mm. This is absolutely in line with everything. It's not again Nikolai's principle. This is Vygotsky's, Vygotsky's idea. He said one of the essential features, uh, most important distinguishing feature of human development, comparing to any other kind of development, comparing to biological development, historical development, very specific feature in relation to psychological development is that psychological development goes as a process of interaction of the ideal and present forms. This is the feature which does not exist in historical development, which does not exist in, in biological development, in evolution, only in a, in a psychological development. That's why it's so important, because it differentiates the psychological development from any other types of development, being to historical or biological, or economical mm. or theological, doesn't matter. So first, and the second point is that uh, it shows the dialectics, dialectics of the present and the future. Mm. Do you remember our story? I told you that according to dialectics, being the process, the be, being is not the state, being is a process and being is the process of becoming or becoming something else. This is what dialectics is. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I told you before the break. So when I'm saying child's being, being, I mean the child is becoming different, slowly, child becoming. And there is a dialectics of present and the future because becoming is for the future, from present to the future. I'm becoming something, something different. 
what's the idea? Why Vygotsky introduced the ideal forms and present forms? What are these forms? Why ideal? So very, very shortly. Uh, I will begin with the famous example. Vygotsky gives an example, very simple example everybody can understand. You don't need to be a psychologist to understand this. Because every father, every mother, every grandfather, grandmother, every teacher knows this. Uh, the Vygotsky's example is this. Imagine a baby, uh, infant. The baby, infant, every father remembers the first time. So, and Vygotsky says that, look how mother communicates, how the mother communicates with the baby, with the infant. She talks to him or her. She speaks to her and to him. Yeah. Looking at reactions. If you come to this mom and say to her, why well, you are speaking to this? The baby doesn't understand. Uh, you will be the you will you will be then the enemy of this mom forever. She will <laughs> never forgive you, right? Because every mom said, "No, of course, my my John or my Anthony, my Nikolai completely understands what I'm saying." <laughs> no? Well, of course, it's a party joke, but uh, it's not a joke. You know, Vygotsky was a genius, taking the the moments everybody knows, moments mm. that he was able to see very very deep processes behind these very simple very simple uh, uh, things like like uh, like bringing the the coin for the lord or just deciding what to do so the genius is genius okay so what Vygotsky says he says look let's look let's look at this example genetically genetically mom is speaking to the child all the time using her psychological functions, which is called speech. She is actually speaking to the child and, and trying, to, trying to find how the child reacts. So for mom, it's a communication. And what this, this, what, what this is for the child? The child is in a situation when somebody speaks to him or to her. Speech, mom's speech is around the child. Of course, the child doesn't understand the meaning, uh, but the child is in a situation when developed function, speech, is in present time, mm. mom's speech. And then Vygotsky says, let's look further. Let's look what happens in three years. In three years, at the age of one and then at the age of three, definitely, the child will be able to speak this language, speech development. So, and this is what mom expected. That's all we all expect from the children. But he says, it's a, very interesting, but this developed form, developed form of speech exists in the child's life from the very beginning. It means that the future form, what the child should get in the future by a known mystical way presents from the very beginning and the child begins to interact with this first by reacting opening eyes smiling listening mom's voice uh, reacting then imitating then bubbling then 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 and then the child develops his speech in the process of interacting with mom's developed speech all the time imagine what happens if there is no developed speech around the child if nobody speaks to the child can we expect that in one year, in three years, the child's speech will, will be developed? No, absolutely no. So this is why so important for development that the function which the child can on, should only reach at the end of developmental cycle 
should somehow to be in presence today mm. and actively interact with the child imitations repetitions so that's why Vygotsky called this mom's developed speech ideal form ideal form doesn't mean ideal doesn't mean like the best the best <clears throat> ideal is just uh, more developed more developed okay but when the child reaches this level in three years the child will interact with much more developed new forms of ideal speech when he, he goes to school and so on. and every time when the child is re is reaches the certain level of development his communication with the another level uh, of, of ideal forms so and it, the process goes and goes and goes and never stops that's why ideal forms are so important because they they just show they might show me the direction of child development child development goes on the direction to that to that ideal form with which the child interacts mm. for me as a researcher it's so important to understand what is the direction of child development development of child speech development of child thinking development of child's emotions development of child's memory or attention or imagination so and to Mm. And to understand this, I might use two ways. First way is that I go, I go to the child's everyday settings, family settings, for example, or, or, or classroom, or uh, early childhood settings. And my task is, uh, if my research question is to study the directions of children's development, my task is very simple. I have to find what are the ideals for ideal forms surrounding the child mm. and how in the process of child's everyday life during the lessons or classes or play or so how the child interacts with these ideal forms so uh, when i have 100 hours of observation and if my research question is to, to to study the directions of the process i'm only taking from these observations the moments when the child interacts with the ideal forms which might be teachers instructions or mm. whatever so you see how how it helps me as a researcher to focus on the specific aspect of my in my data because these are the most important things because this interaction of ideal and present form is because he says the distinguishing feature of the human development he, he says that if there is no ideal forms no development or if there are ideal forms but if there is no interaction if the child does not interact mm. with ideal forms no development and this i'm trying to explain why this principle is so important and how it helps me to create my experimental settings before going to the children i have to think about okay uh, what kind of ideal forms I will bring and what I'm going to do to create the situation when the child will interact with this. So I have two tasks. I have to, I have to provide to the child the, more, the most efficient ideal forms mm. and I have to think what are the most efficient ways of interacting of the child with this. So you see as a researcher I have very different tasks. I am I'm inter I'm involved in the process. I'm a part of the process. I'm just actively creating the conditions by mm. providing these ideal forms. If this ideal form doesn't work, I change the ideal form. I try different ideal forms in, in order to find which is the, the best ideal form for the child at this age, from this ethnic group, from this cultural background from that learning difficulties and so on and so on and so on so mm. depending on the depending on the child child and it's my second task is that if there are good ideal forms what might be wrong is that there is no interaction how what can i do during my experiment to 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 create to to to, to build the system of interactions how i want to keep the child involved in interacting with their ideal forms so i'm making my research design having this in mind because mm. if my research question is about that 
if my research question is about what are the, the direction of the child development in this particular age or in this particular settings or in this particular group and this, with this particular learning difficulty so uh, and what might be the best ideal forms and ways of interaction to overcome these learning difficulties to support development you see I, I can put a lot of interesting research questions here based on this principle of the yeah. ideal and present forms I will start from the point why this principle is important. Mm. So the answer is uh, quite uh, quite simple on one hand. On the other hand, it's not as simple. So <clears throat> this principle is important because it is related with another principle of the theory. This is experimental principle. This is the principle how to organize the experiment, but it has a relation with the theoretical principle, which is called the principle of mediation. So it is related with the concept of the sign, right? So it is related to the concept of mediation. It is related to the concept of uh, the, and the principle of signification in contrast to signalization. Mm -hmm. And is related to the ideas of, of, of cultural development. So this is, I, I already mentioned, I just want to summarize. And through this, it is related to the idea of the social interaction as a source of development. You see, you see every concept is located in the system of other concepts. And this is the only way to understand particular concept is to describe the relationship with other concepts. this principle i'm now speaking about experimental principle is related to one of the laws of development you might disagree you might say no it's not a law of development but at least you understand that it was law vygotsky himself defined as the law of development and he said that is the most important law of development so and that's why uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this law, very shortly. Mm -hmm. So this is the law which says that there are four stages of development of every higher psychological function. It gives us a key to understanding. If something go goes wrong with the child, if the child has a problem, difficulties, maybe one of these stages was uh, didn't went correctly. And this gives us a, a better understanding if you want to think how we can help this child. The first stage, Vygotsky called stage of primitive psychology, but I prefer to use the uh, word in the stage of natural behavior. Natural behavior is when the small children uh, are not using any signs. They, uh, their behavior is natural. The second stage is the stage of naive psychology. When the child is copying, imitating the ways of using some tools for example we are saying that we are using these fingers like one two three and the child also can repeat one two three but he doesn't understand that the fingers are related to the number of objects for for him it's still two three different things the most important stage is this stage number three Vygotsky said uh, call it the stage of external science and stage of external operations these operations with external signs are different than operations without signs. Operations without signs is the child has to look at the objects and say, say to himself, uh, remember three, remember three, something like that. Mm -hmm. But when there, is a, when there is a sign like fingers or oh, one, two, three. So you see the, the operations are different. There are operations of pointing, there are operations of relating the signs to the objects. So it's a different psychological structure of operations. But they are external operations and the signs are external signs. The next stage is stage four, which is the stage of internal operations and internal signs. And the child can count without using fingers, mm -hmm. as if the fingers are now in his mind. <laughs>
as a psychologist when I'm doing my research about uh, to support children to develop their cultural memory. I cannot cannot do this without bringing to the children uh, some cultural tools, which then maybe they will use as their developmental tools, depending on the situation. So, okay. And you see how important this is for teachers. The general advice is when the child has a problem, don't think it's because of genetics. Don't think it's because of brain disorder. Think about maybe the child was not supported when he was at the second stage. Mm. Maybe the child was not good in moving through the third stage. And what we have to do is just to take the child, put the child into a special, specially created situation, maybe play, game, competition, whatever. And to introduce these tools, he probably or she probably doesn't have. And then having these internal tools, the child will come back to the class being equipped with the tools and the new task will be much easier for the child to understand or to remember because if there is tools, if there are tools, the child can use tools with different mm -hmm. tasks. They are not related to the certain task. Okay? So it's helpful to, to assist the child in acquiring the tools in, a, in perhaps a more playful setting yeah, and then, yeah, and then yeah. transport those tools to an academic setting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. When the child has a, has tools here, so that the child much much better understands the new information, because the tools work. The tools work. Uh, they are not related anymore to the concrete task. They are universal. They can the child can apply these tools for different. And even even without even understanding how it happens that he can remember more because it goes it goes in a, in a way that the child maybe not even understand can you can you think of some research questions that can be answered with this particular tool with i mean with this particular principle or can you think of any other research studies that uh, utilize yeah, this well uh, uh, of course, on one hand, we have a lot of research about uh, using different science and tools, developmental tools. And I can give you an example with the fantastic work of Elena Badrova and Deborah Leon. Leon they published uh, several books and they, their book, the main book is the, the Tools of the Mind. The Tools of the Mind, mm. published 1996. You can find a lot of interesting uh, information there. They are in the United States. Uh, so, and many, many others. And as I said, uh, some of my students are also applying this principle. But uh, this principle might be very helpful if the research question is somehow related to, uh, to the idea of sign and mediation and the tools. And so, because uh, there, are, there are millions of research questions, but if the research question is related to the development, looking on the what kind of signs and how they mediate and, and mm -hmm. uh, how children are using different signs to mediate. So these all, these heap, heaps of research questions uh, are, are the questions which will require this principle to be, uh, to be introduced to the research program. But before that, um, I ask my students to think carefully about is this principle applicable to their research? Because as you know, there are five principles and sometimes only one of these principles is applicable to the research, sometimes mm -hmm. two principles. So uh, I, cannot I cannot imagine the situation when all five principles are <laughs> applicable because our research questions are very specific. Mm. Uh, we cannot ask general questions. This is uh, for philosophy, and we love philosophy, but we are not philosophers. Okay. Uh, when when we do our research, so so. But uh, however, what I think is important is that there are principles, and you can just think about which of these might be better for your research program, and it's a very very big help for the students, I think. 
they have uh, something to choose from right instead of building something which might be good or not so and that was the utilitarian or practical or concrete uh, idea i wanted to Wound said, impossible to study experimentally. Vygotsky said, why? It is possible to study experimentally, but of course it should be a special type of experiment. It should be a different experiment. We have to find some objective processes in subjective <laughs> phenomena which is logically impossible and the way to, to do this is just to change the logic because when i say logically impossible i might mean simple formal logic mm. but there are different types of logics one of these logics is so-called dialectical logic and dialectical logic is different from formal logic. Dialectical logic was created by another great philosopher from Germany, Georg Friedrich Wilhelm Hegel, who introduced a different logic of studying, of studying the processes, the, not the things, but the processes, the changes. He said, it's a logic of studying the changes, processes, studying development. And Vygotsky's contribution to psychology was he tried to apply dialectical logic of Hegel to study in psychology because it was the only way to resolve the problem. He said, yes, subjective mental processes are subjective mental processes, yes. And they all are different. Everybody is unique psychologically. How we can then make a, any generalization? Impossible. But the answer of Vygotsky was very clear. In this quotation, he is saying that we will never understand child development without changing our view. And the change of view is that child development is a complex dialectical process which are characterized by metamorphosis and metamorphosis is the term he took directly from Hegel <laughs> but as if he is afraid we do not understand what it is he says metamorphosis or oh, oh, which is qualitative transformation of certain forms into others Can we compare um, a bud, a flower, and a fruit? So that transformation. Can we compare um, water and ice and steam? No. And can we maybe compare um, uh, a, a butter, the process of a butterfly developing? When mm -hmm. the bud goes to the flower, there's still, it still has its bud, budness, bud essence. Yeah, when the flower goes and this to the is fruit, this, this, this is a, this is a, yeah, philosophically yeah. it's a negation, a negation of the negation. And you probably remember that law that the next stage is a kind of negation of a sublation, which means that it becomes hidden within, not dies completely. Uh, you remember, you, you had an access to my chapter yeah. about dialectics. So, mm -hmm. and ice, ice and water and stem is very good example of qualitative transformations but this is not a dialectical transformation because dialectically there is no way back mm -hmm. can you see the flower coming back to the bud no not until it creates a new bud yeah yep yep so physically so water can come to, from stem to water, then to ice, then back to water. So, and it's more, uh, more quantitative changes because it's just a, it's just a distance between the atoms, a physical distance between the atoms, connections. 
So it can be very easily explained by just quantitative characteristics. Mm. That's why in physics, it is called the aggregate states of water, right? Yeah? Aggregate states means that it all depends on the, on the how long atoms are from each other or how close they are to, to each other. So this is not the example of development because water does not develop. Water just changes, remains the same, but changes the, the, the aggregate state. Take your butterfly example. Okay. Take my, my fruit example. So there are new quality, new quality of things. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that it's, it's only looks differently. It means that it's uh, organized differently. Mechanical system, for example, your car mm. is, is your car, and uh, uh, you cannot expect from your car next year there will be five wheels <laughs> and, <laughs> and 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 uh, six cylinders in your car instead of four, right? Never. So organic systems are developing through the process of differentiation. They are just creating their new parts from mm. from themselves, right? Okay. Take. Take the family as an example. Family. First family, when you got married, I, I, I take ideal case, so you, you are only two. And then your family generates something and then in five years, you see, you have five children. <laughs> wow. Family grows and you see the difference. It was a qualitative change. Life of parents before the children, and life of the parents after the children, right? Their whole life is completely reorganized. Mm. And there are new parts, new components, which in Hegel's sense, we can call new organs, because it's organic system, it consists from organs. We might, we might have some results, some fruits at the end. And we might be happy about it. Say, look, we did the experiment. We have developed the child's memory, and now it was like that. Now it's like this. You see, the qualitative change happened. The child is now thinking differently. Or oh, now the child is memory is working differently. That's Vygotsky's experiment. Blah blah blah. And uh, applauses, glories, grants, everything. But are you sure that what you did is a really Qualitative, qualitative change. Qualitative change is something which remains forever. Or not forever, but at least till the moment of the next qualitative next. change. It doesn't, go, it doesn't go back to being ice. It doesn't go back. So that's why my principle, this is important. If you come back to this chart in a month and repeat the same test, you will see that what you have developed and then in, in a week, in a month, completely disappears from chance. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It means that of course you have created ideal conditions and of course you have developed something. But this development is not a development because what you developed disappeared from child's mind in, in a very short time. But Nobody cares about that. Look at psychological journals. They just show you, show you the pre-test, post-test, and that's it. So, so, just, so to, just to avoid this situation, mm. a risk that what you are developing is not the real qualitative change. Maybe the child might be too small to test. Maybe you are, you are trying just to develop the, the fruit just directly from, from the bud, <laughs> forgetting that it should be a flower in between. You can create something which looks like a, like a, like a fruit, <laughs> but what you are doing actually, you are destroying the bud instead of <laughs> making a fruit. If, for example, it happens that after my experiment, I come in, well, usually I, I do repetition in a week, then in two weeks, and then in a month. Mm. Okay, so, but imagine something happens that 
you are coming back and test the child again in a, in a month and you see that what you have developed disappeared, disappeared completely from child's mind. And which means that there is no sustainable qualitative results, which means that your experiment was not successful, which means many, many things. But why this principle goes the last? It helps me, it's, it helps me to find where is my fault. If after mm. this something happened, I look at other principles and ask questions. Maybe my experiment was not successful because I did not find the proper buzz of development. Maybe it was my mistake. Maybe the child had, had no buzz, had no, uh, you remember that, had no high psychological function, which, which is just on the, on the bad stage. Maybe my mistake was there. And I have to think about it. And I have maybe to redesign my experiment. I have to rethink about it if the problem is there. Or it might be that the, the contradiction, the collision, the social situation of development I created was not as dramatic. Maybe it was pseudo dramatic. Mm. Sometimes children, sometimes children uh, are just playing dramatic, dramatic play, but they are led by a teacher. They are imitating dramatic things. They are not really having their spiritual Maybe, mm. maybe, the, maybe the mistake is there, or maybe the ideal forms I selected and I tried to use was not good ones, or maybe the interaction of the ideal and present was not properly organized. Maybe yes, and finally maybe the tools, developmental tools I suggested and in implemented were not appropriate, were not prop good enough for this. So it gives me a kind of, it gives me a kind of opportunity uh, to revise, to revise all my experimental settings and to play this then because I don't know the answer. So I'm repeating my experiment, I'm, I'm changing another buds, I'm trying to use different kind of kind of dramas, or I bring new ideal forms, or I use different tools. So I'm, I'm playing with my experiment. I'm repeating experiment with different children. Uh, one experimental series, two, three, five, ten, twenty. So until I have a qualitative reorganization. So it sounds like if you're going to use principle five in your research design, you have to have some sort of long longitudinal uh, approach. Um, yeah, it's a sort of longitudinal. But I might be using that term wrong, but you have to yeah. have some distance. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You have to repeat, uh, well, what I say, you have to repeat at least twice. Okay. Your post-test, you have to repeat at least twice to make sure that as a result, you got what you wanted. But what we want is a qualitative change. If it doesn't happen, something went wrong. What percentage of research studies that invoke Vygotsky's name actually use the principles that you've outlined? Well, uh, it's a difficult question, hmm. and uh, uh, I can make a diplomatic answer. And if they and, and if and, and if they don't use the principles, is that really as problematic as we might think? Uh, you are asking very direct <clears throat> questions, but I have to be respectful to all the community. And Got my it. answer, my answer will be very diplomatic, something like not too much, <laughs> not too much, unfortunately. But. What I am absolutely sure about is that Vygotsky himself, especially in the last uh, period of his life, he did, and his colleagues, they did experimental studies on attention, memory, conceptual development, imagination, absolutely according to those principles. In one of my publications, I just take one example, one of the examples 
from Vygotsky's original publication where he describes the experimental settings of one uh, study about developing of child's memory. I just copy past these mm. two pages description suggesting my readers to find all the principles and they all are there. Okay. He did not say we did it, we did it according to this principle. No, no. But if you look through, go through the whole description of the experiment, you will see all these are there in, in, implicitly, not explicitly. So that was a and, kind and of my other question is is uh, please help me and whoever is watching this understand uh, why it's important to use all five principles. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure that the task is to use all five principles. Okay. It, de it depends on your research question. Okay. Uh, depending on your research question, you select from this list those principles you can use for your experimental design. I'm not insisting that we have to use all five it's too complex mm. but somehow the concrete experimental research should be related to this list uh, and taking one or two depending on the research question got it uh-huh well but it gives you options but there is a requirement you know uh I'm now repeating what Vygotsky said. It's not Nikolai saying Vygotsky said. Look, you see, I'm always giving the voice to Vygotsky. <laughs> I'm trying to, so sorry, I'm quoting him a lot, but I mm. wanted this lost voice to come back again. He said that if we take cultural historical theory as a theoretical framework, we have no choice. We have to apply these principles, we have to take the experimental genetic method because if you take the theory, you have to, you should take the, this method, experimental genetic method. You cannot take the theory and continue using the traditional methods because traditional methods are methods of studying functions as they are. 